Hello and welcome to Inside Sports. I'm your host, Todd Blackstock. We have an exciting show for you today as we're in Black History Month. It's February and we always have great shows. Well, on today's episode, we have the new head coach and owner of the St. Louis Bandits new indoor football team, Jeff Hunt, with us. So he's going to be with us in just a moment. And Cassandra Walker from STL TV has a great story about an African-American race car driver. So stay with us and much more coming up next on Inside Sports. show as promised Jeff Hunt's with us. Jeff there's been a lot of uh, indoor football teams that have come and gone throughout the St. Louis area in uh, the last 10 20 years but there's a new one on the horizon you've got a minority owner and head coach and you're uh, blazing some trails here in the St. Louis area. Well we're, we're excited first of all thank you for having me on the show uh, we're excited to be coming back in 2021 I mean with the COVID uh, going on around uh, in America and uh, across the country, it's just, it's been tough, but we've been getting a lot of uh, a lot of good uh, feedback on a lot of different owners and, and their arenas and stuff. So we we, we will be playing this season. Um, you know, like I said, uh, a lot of the teams are playing ten games, possibly maybe eight. Some playing twelve, just depending on what the arena is allowing them to play. So the St. Louis Bandits, that's the new moniker. We've had the River City Raiders. We've had some other teams. What is your approach coming into St. Louis going to be? Because we obviously have a void in professional football. Uh, people did come out to the indoor games, but it seems like, you know, it lasts a couple of years and then uh, it kind of goes by the wayside. What do you think that you're going to bring to the table to keep this, keep this franchise here for a little bit? Well, well, you, you uh, touched a uh, very important topic. You know, a lot of teams that have, have came and, you know, and, and played here maybe one year, uh, you know, not even three years, you know, and that's the thing is not understanding uh, how important the fans, how important, you know, making it affordable. Uh, a lot of fans, are, you know, uh, in this city here, I tell you, you know, you, you guys, uh, you know, when the Blues won, you guys welcome the Blues, you know, after all these years, the Cardinals is, uh, I'm a Cardinal fan, you know, for many years. Uh, but, you know, this, 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 uh, you know, indoor game is, it's, uh, it's different. I mean, and, and people have to understand it's about the fans. And I think when I was in Arena Warren, even though we were a big market, you know, we had 32,000 fans, you got to get out in the community. You got to get out in the community. You got to make it affordable. Uh, even when our preseason game, we allowed the fans to come in free and then just pay for parking just, just to see what the actual arena game is all about. But you have to make it affordable. And I think getting out in the community is those are the most two important things to do. And uh, I tell you what, talking with Jamie Martin, which is a former uh, St. Louis quarterback, and Lee Johnson, which is uh, – he's from Mizzou, played for the Chiefs and Redskins, uh, which was my boss in San Antonio for, for three seasons. And, and we, we all said, all three of us said, we're going to get out in the community, and that's, and that's going to be important to the players. Give us a little background on your history in football, kind of, uh, you know, where you played and uh, your rise up through the ranks. Well, I mean, you know, I, you know, coming up, I was I played high school football, played you know JUCO school, uh, didn't didn't play didn't play arena football. I, I was able to fortunate enough uh, after leaving college, I went and played uh, a little semi pro one year, and then and my wife said. Uh, you won't be able to play this because, you know, if something happened, you won't be able to take care of the family. <laughs> so uh, my agent spoke to Gary Reasons, which was, uh, was a New York Giant linebacker with uh, Lawrence Taylor. Uh, he gave me an opportunity in Oklahoma City. And I tell you what, uh, we're friends today, but I tell you what, he was he was a tough cookie on me. But uh, he, he made me the guy I am today. And uh, uh, but just starting there and then starting the arena game and arena one and arena two, which is a development league. Uh, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change anything for it. And, 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 and these lower leagues, which is I'm in the lower league now, we don't have a TV deal, which is a minor, which is a minor league. They got to understand that, you know, we have to make it, you know, fun for the fans. We got to make it affordable. And that's that's going to be the goal for me. Uh, I was when I was in San Antonio, we, we went to all events of the San Antonio Spurs. We did everything, anything and everything. And I tell you what, we're going to do it here in St. Louis. And we're going to get out and, and interact with the fans, the schools, the hospitals. I think that's very important. 
Yeah, you must be excited to have a former NFL quarterback as your GM, Jamie Martin. I've had the opportunity to meet him several times. He's got a <laughs> real nice restaurant, Circa Pub and yes. Grill in, uh, in De Pere, right outside the city limits. And he hosts every several months <laughs> a former St. Louis football cardinal, Big Red Reunion. And we right. haven't done COVID started, but I know it's coming up again. So he's, you know, always in touch with uh, the St. Louis football community. Yes. And he was a pretty good player for a backup to be in the league that long. I actually saw him, you know, in action several times with the Rams and the uh, right. <laughs> Jaguars and some of the other teams he played with. You, you know, it's got to be kind of cool having an ex uh, NFL guy as your GM. I tell you what, you know, one thing that I like about Jamie, he's very detailed. And he, he, you know, he first told me is he'd been around a lot of head coaches and a lot of great coaches at that. And then uh, he said, the one thing is to, to help me understand the indoor game and I'll help you, I'll teach you the actual uh, NFL uh, type protocol. And, and you know what, we, we, we work every, every Monday, we see each other and we talk X and O's. I'm very excited to uh, speak to Jamie and stuff. And I think Jamie's going to do a great job with the quarterbacks. And also he's my general manager and stuff. I think that's, that's a really plus uh, bringing him on board. And, and, and now not just that having, having Lee Johnson, uh, my former boss and uh, Lee Johnson is well respected in, in, the, in the Missouri area and stuff. And uh, Lee was, Lee was, Lee's my mentor. He was hard on me the last three years in San Antonio. And I tell you what, we laugh and joke right now that I'm his boss. He used to be my boss now. So we, we kind of uh, return the favor now. <laughs> I had the opportunity of broadcasting on KFNS 590 The Fan, uh, the home games and some away games yeah. for the River City Raiders and the team before that. And it's a different game. It's fast paced. It's, uh, it's a shorter field. And it <laughs> seems like, you know, the, each year they kind of bring in some new rules to be right. engaging with the fans, fan friendly and, uh, you know, to keep the, up, the, the tempo up. Well, I tell you what, uh, you know, in arena one, and these are the rules that we're playing, and I'm so happy about that. Uh, you know, it's 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 going to be high scoring. It's a uh, one guy motion. The linebacker has to raise his hand to declare uh, that he's eligible, and actually the tight end as well had to declare. Uh, it's eight man on each side. Uh, you know, you, you and it's it's just going to be a lot of fun. I, I think the thing what really makes it going to be fun. I was talking to the owner in Tampa Bay today. They have about nine guys from the National Football League. We have about 15. Um, and I'm actually waiting for a guy to clear waivers uh, from Indianapolis coach. And so we're looking pretty good on our side. I know Jamie and Lee is excited about my recruitment on what I've been doing the last four months and bringing these players in from all over the country. Uh, you know, I'm happy to have Drew Hare from, uh, he's from this area out of NIU. He's with the Bears. Uh, Kendall Morris out of French now, like I spoke to you earlier. Uh, I'm, you know, he's a local kid, you know, was with the Chiefs and the Baltimore Ravens and uh, all, all my secondary, all NFL guys, Kevin Rogers with the Rams, Ra Ravens, and also Minnesota Vikings. And we got, we got Heath Harden out of Miami, Ohio. He was with the Atlanta Falcons. So we're looking pretty good on the field. The, the main thing uh, is to get these guys together and see how well they play together. Yeah, fantastic. Well, let's take a quick break and okay. uh, we'll pick up this conversation with Jeff Hunt, the new owner and head football coach of the St. Louis Bandits. Stick around. I got some oxy after I hurt my neck. First, I took them to feel better. Then, I just kept taking them. I didn't know they'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. show it's black history month and we've got a pioneer in the indoor football league african-american owner and head coach jeff hunt joining us on the show today you know jeff uh, we'll kind of pick it up where we left it off we were talking about some of the, the roster some of the local kids football yeah. players that are going to be playing on this team but it sounds like you're not only taking local kids you're kind of yeah. going out for some of the best talent nationally yeah, I mean, one thing when I when I met with J with Jamie and stuff and, and brought him on as a general manager, I told him what my goal was, and I, I want to win my first year. I'm about winning. I when we were San Antonio, we won the division. Uh, we won, we went 14 and two, 
and it's hard that we were undefeated on the road. We were the hottest game on, uh, well, actually hottest team, I'm sorry, on NFL Network and also CBS. So uh, to go eight and on the road and, and to, to go seven and one at home, uh, it's, a, it's a great achievement. I think that's what my goal is to hear. And I want to bring a championship to the St. Louis area. I know um, when I went to a couple of Battlehawks game and then, you know, and just seeing the Blues play, I, I want to feel that. I want to feel that that camaraderie. I want to feel that that you know winning and stuff. And I think the guys that's coming here, uh, you know, we like I said, I, I just signed Keenan Mace out of Lindenwood. He was with the Dallas Cowboys. He's a local kid. I'm you know just bringing in uh, some some talent and stuff. And we're, we're very excited. And, and I think that it's going to be competitively, but I think we we're going to probably have an upper edge. Fantastic. It sounds like you're engaged to go out in the community and do things ground roots. We have a lady here in town, Kalia Collier, who mm -hmm. is the owner of the St. Louis Surge. And they're a, a minor league professional team here. They've been here for about eight years now. Mm -hmm. And she's recently been named as a, a vice president of community relations with the, mm -hmm. uh, the new soccer team wow. coming to St. Louis. So she's rising through the ranks. And it sounds like that's kind of a, a good plan to model yourself after because I'm not sure if you know her or not, but you kind of are mentioning the same things that she did with the surge ground roots. You yeah. come into the community, you get to know the kids, you go out mm -hmm. to the, some of the schools and things right. like that. Uh, you know, what is your plan to do that and how important is it? Well, it's, first of all, it's very important. I mean, and I'm actually talking with my staff right now to uh, to contact, to reach out to schools. And, you know, and again, with the pandemic and the hospital is going to be a little tough, but we're going to find a way to even even get to the hospitals and stuff. We're setting up actually uh, some, some paperwork and stuff. And then uh, the players are already know we do Zoom calls once a week with the players. They already know coming in that we would have to we would have events uh, once a week. Their, their goal is to sign up to those events and they must attend those events. Uh, and we're going to have three players uh, and one coach to, to go to those events. So we got everything uh, set up. And then my doctors are, are very, uh, very good. Uh, I, actually, two of my doctors work for the Blues and stuff. So uh, we're going to they're going to set some stuff up uh, on their side where we can definitely, you know, try to get a chance to go to the hospitals. So it sounds like you're putting together a nice staff. It's kind of all going on right as we speak right now. It's got to be exciting. I know there was uh, the St. Louis Family Arena. I know there's like going to be a new turf going in there. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And maybe, uh, you know, about how like uh, some of the organizational things are all coming together with equipment and rosters and things. Okay. Well, first of all, we've been working with Gary. Uh, well, Gary is, uh, you know, he's been with, been with, he's been knowing me since 2005. He works for Rydell. He's been working for Rydell for about 30, 31 years. He, he covers the Midwest. So that's the first person I reached out was uh, Rydell. I wanted to make sure though, uh, I lead did have a contract with the show. And also we was doing some stuff with Under Armour. So I wanted to make sure we wasn't contracted. Uh, uh, first of all, you know, make sure that everything was okay. And then when I reached out to Gary, we met for lunch. And, and then from there, well, we just start talking about, you know, the, the, the equipment first, you know, the different uh, different type of protocol for as the, uh, you know, game gear. I want to make sure my guys are wearing the top of the line game gear. We talked about pricing and things like that, how soon it would get here. Uh, and as we speak, like I said, I, I told you earlier, the uh, helmets and shoulder pads should be delivered either tomorrow or next day. Uh, and then the game gear would be ready, I would say March 5th, somewhere around there. Uh, but we will have it in time. We have four sets of uniforms, so I'm excited about that. I can't wait to show the fans that. I, I think uh, me and Lee uh, designed those, and we just had uh, Rydell just actually uh, put the blueprint together. And for us, the not football, afraid to spend a little money on the uniforms. If you oh my God! I tell you what, it wasn't. I tell you what, it wasn't cheap. I, I, I tell you that much. <laughs> uh, how about tryouts? I know uh, it sounds like you've got a a big part of your roster already in place. Uh, yeah. Is there? opportunities for other football players to come in from out of town or some yeah. local guys or you know maybe someone that gets released from an NFL team uh, mm -hmm. I know you're trying to be a little bit of a feeder league towards the NFL and, and you know maybe have some back and forth like the Battle Hawks well you know the one thing it's funny you say that because Joe Powell got a hold of me that was the safety for the Battle Hawks he reached out to me a couple of the guys that reached out to me that played for the Battle Hawks and uh they said soon, you know, it's well, actually Joe was with the CFL team, but if he just found out they might not be playing. So he said he'll be in contact with the next couple of weeks. I just told him to give me a call be, before, uh, you know, March, by March 10th. That way I can get him on the roster because I do have a deadline too, but I can also bring in players on a three day waiver. Uh, we can actually take a look and evaluate those guys if it all pans out. And if we, we don't get a good evaluation, I can sign them to another three day waiver. Uh, that's how the elite uh, standard works out. 
uh, and um, they can't come in and they can't come in and try out, you know, tryouts are over with, but I can only bring them in on a waiver. So we're going to constantly bring in players each week. Uh, that's how we did, you know, in, in Arena One, kept bringing in ball players. And that's why we stayed, you know, stayed on top of the game and stuff. Because, you know, you're going to always have injuries. You're going to always have guys that have some nick and bruises. So you always want to bring in the best. Well, if somebody would like to maybe help sponsor your organization or help get involved or maybe just get some more information, what, what contact information should they look for? Well, I'll tell you what, the, the first thing you would do, you want, you want to go to the website, which is uh, stlewisbanditsfootball.com. Uh, and then my information is on there. Uh, it's stlewisbanditsfootball uh, at Gmail. You can reach me there or my phone number. Uh, I, I get a lot of phone calls. I get a lot of emails every day. Um, actually, I have to delete a lot of emails because I get so many in a day. Uh, I, you wouldn't believe how many players I'm getting. And, and be surprised, I'm getting a lot of players from the XFL League. And, and I guess it's because of Jamie and Lee Johnson because – I'm telling you, I'm getting that's a lot a of credibility info. there. I know that's a lot of credibility. I'm getting a lot. And like I said, uh, I spent two teams with, with Lee Johnson. So I know he has a lot of, a lot of NFL guys that he knows uh, that that's he alumni with from zoo and that guys he knows. And I know a lot of agents and stuff too. I've been talking to a lot of sport agents around the country. So uh, that's why I was able to pick up uh, Mike Hodges that played with that Prescott at Mississippi state. He was with the Miami dolphins. He's a four, three, five receiver. Uh, I mean, wow. he's a burner, so I'm glad to have him. And then we got Chase Abbotton from Mizzou. So I was able to pick up Chase, too. So we got some good kids, and I'm excited to uh, see what, how they play on the field. That's that's my, my biggest goal is to get these guys here and, 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 get them, and get them all in jail together. Well, we're very excited about the prospect. Uh, we're just about out of time. Any final thoughts, anything you'd like to put out there before we uh, let you back to your busy schedule? Well, first of all, I just want to tell the fans, hey, we're, we're, we're back here in St. Louis. We're going to give you a good show uh, and, and, and come out and support us. Uh, we're going to be out in the community. You, you, you can best rest assured of that. Uh, and just come out and enjoy the game. And, and anybody who want to sponsor the Bandits, go to the website, stlewisbanditsfootball.com. All right, we'll look forward to that excellent new football brand coming to the St. Louis region just across the bridge in St. Charles Family Arena. Thanks a lot, Jeff, for joining us. Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right, that's Jeff Hunt, owner and head coach of the St. Louis Bandits. They'll be starting up here uh, very shortly. So we're excited about that. We're also excited about this next story we have. STL TV's Cassandra Walker with an innovative African-American uh, African race car driver. Let's take mm -hmm. a look. African Americans have broken many barriers in the sports world, from Jackie Robinson to Arthur Ashe, and many more. However, seeing African Americans in the race car industry is still a rarity. St. Charles Grant Palmer is a young African American driver who has been anxious to thrive in the world of racing since he was a toddler. It, my my dad's got pictures of me when I was younger, and I was sitting there um, playing Gran Turismo with a with a wheel that had the throttle and brake on right here and I remember he told me a few a few months ago when I was younger I would be racing and he, he's watching with his uh his his friend and he's like why does he know how to do counter steering which is where when the car slides you sort of turn into it to correct it and bring it back straight and I think I was three or four years old and he was watching me do this and that's uh I guess that's when it sort of started for them, for my parents to know that I like racing. Now that Palmer is of age to race, he's not only fulfilling his dream, he's taking the lead in this industry by becoming what is known to be just the second African-American to race in the United Kingdom. Ask your question. Usually when we start something, especially if it's gifted in us, we find people who are common and like us that have the same interests that started out young and, and, those people tend to be like idols for us. I heard a story, I saw the story on Netflix, Uppity, about William T. Ribbs. And he was an African-American driver who was, in, I believe he made it to the India, uh, Indianapolis 500 as well. And your dad told me that you just raced recently somewhere that he was the last black person to race there. Is that true? And tell us about that. Uh, we believe it's true. We haven't found anyone else that's like me to race in the UK. Um, it was in the Formula Ford 1600 series. So it's, it's basically the interesting thing about Formula Ford 1600 is it's basically the car hasn't changed since the 60s. It's, you know, um, the only thing that's changed about it is the safety requirements. And it's virtually the same car that they raced back 
a long time ago. Wow. And so that's where he went to start his racing career. That's where I went to go learn and progress my skill set with uh, the Low Dempsey Racing Team. And it was a lot of fun. So I learned a lot. I, I can see why he and a lot of other drivers go over there to race because the racing over there is completely different than it is here in America. Having an open mind about racing as an option, hard work, and goal setting is advice Palmer gives to the young people, which will take them far. Work hard. Um, sort of set your goals and just talk to people. Be, you know, talk to people, make friends with them, and it'll go a long way. And a long way around the track is where Palmer is racing off to. For Inside Sports, I'm Cassandra Walker. Thanks, Cassandra. Wow, very exciting. And it's, it's great to see that young man doing so well in the automobile industry. I mean, racing cars, you know, that's, uh, I think Bubba Wallace is the only African-American I can think of. Anyway, great story. Hey, that's our show for today. We'd like to thank Jeff Hunt, the new owner and head coach of the St. Louis Bandits. I'd like to thank Gary, uh, Gary B. for helping hook this up. Cassandra Walker, we'd like to thank you for watching STL TV. I'm Todd Blackstock. Thanks for watching Inside Sports. We'll see you next time.